In this video training session, we're going to review modifiers. So we will create a modifier. We'll show you how to create a modifier group. And then we'll show you how to attach a modifier group to an order entry item. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get logged into Aloha Manager. All right, so once we're logged into here, we'll go over what modifiers are. So modifiers are essentially instructions, cooking instructions or preparation instructions on a particular order entry item. So a good example of that would be, let's say, pickles. So pickles would be what's considered a modifier because when someone orders something like a hamburger, they you, they need to be able to have the option to either have it with pickles or to be able to remove the pickles. Uh, another good option, uh, another good example of a modifier is uh, a steak temperature. So for instance, a uh, medium rare. So the medium rare would be a modifier because it gets attached to the steak item. So when someone rings in a steak, it will come up with an option to how the customer wanted their steak cooked. So the first thing we'll go over is essentially how to create the modifier itself. So modifiers essentially are the exact same things as items. So we'll go into the same spot as if you were creating a new menu item. So maintenance, menu, items. Generally speaking, when we program our, our modifiers, we typically always start mo the food modifiers at 10,000, uh, at the number item number 10,000 and above. And then drinks will typically, like drink uh, modifiers will do 12,000 and above. So we like to always generally keep those together. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna scroll down until we get to about our 10,000 range. And you can see here the demo database that I'm using for this video. There's already a ton of modifiers created in here. So you can see here, we started at 10,000. These are a whole bunch of modifiers here. So the example of what we're gonna do here here is we'll just go down until we find an empty item that's not being used so we can make a new one yeah, looks like we've got no empty items so what we can do if there's not an empty item we can just create a new one so we know that uh, it ended at 10 two nine two so what we can do if we go to this last one and we hit new little arrow and standard hit OK it will go to the next, it will create another item for us. So what we can do here is we can just call it a short name. So in this particular instance, we're gonna, we're gonna make, a, we'll make a steak temperature. So we'll do medium rare. And if we just click in the chit name field, it's gonna automatically move that down. So your short name, of course, is your, uh, what appears on the button. Chit name is what appears on the kitchen chit or the order chit. And the long name is what appears on a customer's receipt. Uh, generally, modifiers don't show up on customer's receipts unless there's a charge to them. So then we're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you've created a new item that it has a tax group assigned. We know the tax group one is HST. And we're going to need to make sure it has a sales and retail category, which is typically, if it's a food item, we would put it in the food sales category. And then what we're going to do, go ahead and do is we can hit save now. If we have real-time updates enabled, we can hit yes on that. So this actual item we have created now is called medium rare. So now what we need to do is we need to create a modifier group called steak temp. And we need to add this medium rare item that we created to that modifier group. So next thing we want to do is go maintenance, menu, modifier groups. If we hit the drop down here, you can see a list of all the ones that we have created so far, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to hit my little arrow here, standard. We're going to hit okay. And for a short name, we're going to call this steak temps. I'm going to click in the long name and give it the same name here, state temps. Now, some important things with modifier groups, the minimum and maximum field. So the minimum is basically, if you set this to one, it's going to force them 
the server to, or the bartender to have to pick at least one from this modifier group, one item from the modifier group. If you leave it as a minimum of zero, then they'll have the option to bypass and not pick any of the options. If you set a maximum, uh, that means they can only pick that certain amount. So with steak temperatures, what you'd want to do is you'd want to have a minimum of one because when you order a steak, you have to tell the cooks how to cook the steak. So you don't want somebody bypassing this modifier group when it pops up. You're going to force them to pick at least one, and then you're going to put a maximum of one because obviously with steak temperatures, you can't cook a steak medium rare and then rare at the same time. So you can only pick one. So we want them to at least pick one, but can only pick one. This free uh, free column here, you can put in a number in there. Um, what some people will do is they'll have a like a wing sauce modifier group where maybe they'll have a, a minimum of zero, but a maximum of five. But after three, they want to start charging for like 25 cents for a sauce. So they could put in, they would put in a minimum of zero because they don't have to pick a sauce. They put in a maximum of five, but they would put in free uh, for three. So they put the number three in there. So they could pick up to five, but after the third one, the fourth and the fifth one would start charging 25 cents. So that's what you can use that free for. Screen flow required. This is very important. This is for if you want this modifier group popping up when it's a, when an item that it's attached to is ordered. If you don't have screen flow required, check marked, then the modifier group will still be attached to the item, but it won't pop up and force the servers or bartenders to pick something. It will just stay in the background and the only way they could get to the modifier would actually be hit the modifier button and then they'd go in and pick it. But you want something like this to pop up because you know it needs to be asked every single time and you want that flow of when they're ordering in their steak that it's gonna as soon as they hit the steak it's then gonna pop up the modifier group to pick the temperature and then they can pick the temperature and then the flow just keeps going from there so we want to make sure we have screen flow required check marked uh, a couple of the other fields here we don't typically use a lot but if you do you can always hit f1 for help and that will give you an explanation of what those mean so once we have the first kind of done here we're going to then click on our layout tab so the layout tab looks just like a sub menu panel uh, it's going to have a whole bunch of blank items which are sorry blank squares which we have spots to fill in with items that we created so this is where we want to put that steak temperature item that we created which was the medium rare so what we want to do is we can just click anywhere in an empty item here for our item we can hit the drop down and we can just start typing medium and this is the one we created here. I know there's some others in there that's just from the demo database, but this is the new one we created. So I'm gonna select medium rare. If this had a price on it, we could either set it to the item price, which would take the price that was assigned to the item when you created it. Or if you needed to make a button price, you could change that and put a price in there as well. But we don't need to charge anything for obviously a medium rare. Once we're done that, we can go ahead and hit save. So now what we've did is we've created the modifier group called steak temps and we've added a modifier item to it, medium rare. So now the third and final step is, is that we need to attach this modifier group that we created to an actual item that the server or bartender is ordering off of the menu. So what we can do then is we can go back to our maintenance menu items We'll hit our drop down here. And what we want to do is actually, instead of using the drop down, I'm going to go ahead and hit this uh, search up here. And I'm going to start and start typing steak and hit search. Let's see if we can find a steak here. So we got a steak, 1257. So this is our actual order item. This is the, the button that the server bartender would be hitting. We want to click on our modifier tab. So now our modifier, you can see that this steak item currently doesn't have any modifier groups associated to it. You can have up to 10 different modifier groups associated to an item. You're gonna to wanna to make sure when signing a modifier group to an item that you put it in the order that you want the system to ask the server or bartender when ringing the item in. So obviously when somebody, let's say, 
was ringing in um, steak and maybe uh, steak and beer. Well, you wouldn't want the beer choice to pop up before the steak choice because you'd want the steak to pop up and then you'd want it to ask for the, the temperature of the actual steak that needs to be cooked. So that will fall in line right with the item when it prints in the kitchen. So modifier group number one, we're going to hit this drop down and it's going to have a link basically to all the modifier groups that are that have been created in the system. So we're going to go all the way down because we know our new one we created is at the bottom. Should be pretty close to it down here. Uh, let me see here. Maybe it wasn't uh, steak temps. This guy right here. So we know that our steak temps is here. So we have it assigned now as modifier number one. So I'm going to hit save. Do a real time update. Yes. So now in order to push this to the system, I go to utilities. POS, refresh POS, all installed products. Prompt before restarting POS terminals, I'll hit OK. So this is basically sending the information now to the workstations. You don't want to do this obviously when you're busy or somebody's using the workstations because this will cause the workstations to restart. So it takes anywhere usually between four to five minutes depending on your configuration and the age of your hardware to come back up after a refresh. So you want to save your refreshes for non-peak times. Or if you make a change, you can always let the end-of-day process do it as well. Uh, it will automatically do it. So it says the next step is stop the front house. Do you want to proceed with it? Yes. And that's going to go ahead and it's going to shut down and restart and update the front of house terminals. So that steak item will now have a steak temperature modifier group associated to it. So that's how you basically go and you add in a modifier. You do that under item maintenance. Once your modifier item is created, you go into your modifier groups, which is found under maintenance menu modifier groups. You create your modifier groups. You put your modifier items that you made onto the group. And then you go to your actual menu item itself, which is maintenance menu items. Find the item you're looking to attach the modifier group you created to. Go to that item and then go to the modifier tab and associate your modifier groups to the item that you created. See here, if we check another item, let me uh, Philly steak sandwich, for instance, it has two modifier groups. So it's got a starch modifier group on it and an add on so that the starch is going to be for this Philly steak sandwich comes with a choice of a side. So the potatoes, rice, salad. So that's typically the starch modifier group. And then the add on here is probably like if they wanted mushrooms or bacon or something, then that could be added on there as well. Hopefully this uh, gives you a little bit more of an example to use uh, to help you out. If you're, if you're ever wondering or you're struggling with creating modifiers, this will basically go over a quick way of being able to do that. I hope it was informative. Thank you.